the real, desperately needed discussion about the ultimate fate of the remaining Palestinians simply does not exist. All the parties in the Israeli parliament, from right to left, are Zionist. In Israeli society, and increasingly in the outside world, it is only permissible to question the occupation of the West Bank and the Gaza siege. Anyone who questions the occupation of Palestine and the catastrophe Zionism brought on Palestinians is ostracized silenced, called an anti-Semite, or, in case of a Jew, a self-hating Jew. I don't think that we can uh, implement a full right of return for however many Palestinians do want to return, uh, and still maintain the integrity of the State of Israel as a democratic Jewish state, as we in Israel would like to have it. So I think we're going to have to look for a compromise on the right of return, a compromise that will both acknowledge the suffering uh, and, um, and give some forms of reparation uh, and help Palestinian refugees uh, uh, integrate into where, whatever countries they are in today uh, and accept some back into Israel. But it uh, will also have implementation on a level that Israel can live with and still maintain itself as, as Israel and not as the state of the Palestinian refugees. I am not afraid when I will be called to, to war if the Palestinians try to attack my country, I will defend my country like I defend my country against the Egyptians, against the Syrians, against the Hezbollah, against everyone else. I don't think that that should be our consideration when, when we go, go to think whether or not to pull back from the territories. Because as I have already explained, every minute of our being in the territories is harmful to Israel, is exposing Israel for more terrorist attacks, and the Israeli Defense Force is not built to fight terrorist attacks. It is built to fight countries. Activist groups everywhere, of all faiths and none, who campaign for justice and peace, need to ask themselves some uncomfortable questions about how effective really they have been, and more to the point, what they must do to be more effective. In my view, there are two political realities to be faced. The first is that Zionism is not interested and has never been interested in peace on any terms the overwhelming majority of Palestinians and most Muslims could accept. The second is that the governments of the major Western powers are never ever, never ever going to use the leverage they have to call and hold the Zionist state to account for its crimes unless, unless they are pushed to do so by informed public opinion by manifestations of democracy in action. Now, as I said on this very platform in November 2006, and I think it bears repeating, the problem throughout the mainly Gentile Judeo-Christian world is that the citizens of nations, generally speaking, are too uninformed to do the pushing. In fact, they are not only underinformed, they are misinformed, conditioned, one could even say brainwashed to accept a version of history, as Moshe mentioned, which is simply not true. And this has happened in large part because the mainstream media, like almost all politicians, is terrified of offending Zionism. Mm -hmm. Now it follows that if governments are to be pushed to do what is necessary, to bring the conflict in and over Palestine to an end, if, in other words, the citizens of nations are to be empowered to take part in informed and honest debate, to make democracy work for justice and peace. It follows, I believe, that there is an absolute first requirement, and that is the liberation 
of the citizens of the Western nations. Liberation from the tyranny of Zionism's propaganda lies upon which the first draft of Judeo-Christian history is constructed. The good news is that the tools to make this liberation possible are now available. They are books which expose Zionism's version of history for the propaganda nonsense it is. The core essence of this nonsense is that there was no ethnic cleansing of Palestine, that poor little Israel has lived in danger of annihilation and driving into the sea of its Jews, and that Israel had no partners, Palestinian or Arab, for peace. Israel's existence has never ever been in danger from any combination of Arab military force. And that Zionism's assertion to the country was the cover which allowed Israel to get away where it mattered most with presenting its aggression of self-defense. And itself was the victim when actually it was and is the oppressor. In terms of racism, there is no difference between apartheid South Africa and Zionist Israel. The Zionists, however, have the biggest weapon that was not available to South Africa apartheid. Bigger than F-16s, tanks and nuclear missiles put together. It's called the Holocaust. The Holocaust allows Zionists to manipulate world public opinion and to stifle any possible open discussion. It is simply their biggest asset. Today, to be an anti-Zionist is construed as being anti-Semitic, and to be anti-Semitic can send you to prison in Europe. before our eyes, and yet Israel gets away with it. How, how could that be? South Africa didn't get away with it. You know, everybody's criticizing China for its oppression. How does Israel get away with it? And that's one of the real problems that we have. One reason is, of course, is because um, of the media that tries to be even-handed or pro-Israeli. Zionism has a credibility, the idea that Israel is a Jewish state has a credibility that apartheid never had in South Africa. Uh, Christians that are critical hesitate to speak out because they're afraid of being smeared as anti-Semites, so you find very little criticism of Israel in the media. Part of it is, of course, the fact that we're dealing with Jews. So the non-Jewish world feels guilty the Holocaust feels guilty about the Jew, Jewish issue, and so on. It's used politically in a very effective way, in a very cynical way. I mean, it's very hard to say this, but I think it's true. It's seen as a very useful PR tool. You know, the way the, the government plays on, um, on the guilt in Europe over the Holocaust, so that you can't criticize us. Look what you did to us, you see. It intimidates non-Jews. It closes up discussion. It's very effective, and Israel is willing for the sake of its PR and to silence critics, it's willing to sell the victims of the Holocaust. Israel is willing for the sake of its PR and to silence critics, it's willing to sell the victims of the Holocaust. It's willing to sell the victims of the Holocaust. The sad fact is that those six million Jews that died because of a fascist, racist ideology are cynically being used today to justify and support another fascist, racist ideology. As most of my family on both sides were amongst the victims of the Holocaust, I withdraw my permission from 